Hand and batting ninth for the Mets and the pitcher that that Mets lineup will face tonight getting ready to go for the Giants Mike is the right hander Kevin Gosman. Kevin Gosman 24 start 11 of 5 of the 2 2 9 ERA has had a little bit of inconsistency with his split finger fastball although the last couple starts better and then they report that the, his side uh, on the mound between starts this last three days ago uh, he found uh, that groove so we'll watch that pitch very closely when he's right you're going to see uh, mid to high 90s fastball that he can two and four seam he's also got a split a slider and a change up take a look at the Statcast 3D powered by Google Cloud to tell you how he uses those pitches 52 percent of the time you're going to get the four seam fastball and the splitter when it's working you're going to see a lot 35 percent of the time however he will and has been throwing that change up and slider a little bit more and lifetime against the Mets. Uh, he's never beaten him. He's 0 3 with a 5 0 9 ERA, but they have not seen this version of Kevin Gosman. And I think that could be a little advantage for Gosman because this is the first time the Giants and Mets have played since 2019. Hard to believe. Let's take a look at the Giants' defense. It's brought to you by Geico, starting in their outfield from left to right. It'll be Ruff, Slater, and Bryant. Good arms in center and in right field. Crawford and Longoria on the left side. Solano and Flores on the right side. Buster Posey, he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. Both teams have played really good defense this year. The Mets defense has improved a lot from last year to this. Brandon Nimmo, the on base machine at the top of the order, has not been hitting for a lot of power, but he has been a pest. And he is the leadoff man for the Mets tonight against Kevin Gosman. 410 on base percentage. That is lights out. That's all star like. So here we go, and a strike with a fastball. Sixty three degrees tonight at game time. So there was that split and that was a good one. Dan Asanya the plate umpire he's a guy I think is more of a low ball guy you'll see more knee high strikes than you will belt high strikes he doesn't have big corners. One one and that one. Off the outside, ball two. So Dan behind the plate, Jeremy Rayak at first, Scott Berry and John Lipka round out this crew, and Dan is the crew chief calling balls and strikes tonight. Two one pitch from Gosman. Nimmo fouls that one back out of play. It's two and two. Well, the Mets, there's been a lot of talk these last few days leading up to it, and I'm sure around their clubhouse today. About their travel scenario. They played the Sunday night game last night. Got into San Francisco about 5 a.m. this morning after the long flight across the country. And on the field here tonight for game one. Full count to Nimmo, three and two. Nimmo's been a better home hitter than road hitter. But this is what he does. He's worked the count full three and two. Gosman walks the first batter of the game. So now Michael Conforto comes up. Another Mets hitter with a much higher on base average than batting average. But by his standards, it's not been a great year for Conforto. Eight home runs, 29 batted in. Ball one. That was a straight change. There were times this year that he didn't throw any straight changes. The split finger was working so well, but I think he's feeling now that he has to establish all of his pitches early in a ball game because that split has been a little temperamental. Conforto fouls that one out of play. Well, I think the Giants, you said it, believe that Gosman has taken several steps forward back to being the pitcher that he was for the first half of the season when he was an all star. He hasn't been quite that effective of late. They were really happy with the side work he put in this week leading into this start. But right now, that command is not. 
quite as sharp as I'm sure he would like. He's thrown nine pitches and only three strikes. Well, but that was similar to even when he was rolling early in the year. I mean, he still at times in the first inning would take 10, 15 pitches to get a feel for for his pitches. But long about now, he's going to want to try and throw some quality pitches location wise. That one was a pretty good fastball, 95 miles an hour. It's two and two. When you're out there and you're making a pitch, you're correcting off of what you just threw. You make slight adjustments. Uh, you may try and short your stride. A big adjustment in your stride is, a, is an inch. That's a big deal. Uh, you may adjust the thumb below the ball. If you move it a quarter inch, that's a big deal. Uh, you may want to try and sit a little bit higher. Uh, have better posture. You're making just minor corrections trying to get a feel of the release point and a command of your release points which maximizes your your velo your your velocity uh, your movement and it gives you a better ability to command your pitches. That's all happening right now for for Gosman. 2 2 pitch Conforto strikes out swinging and that was a real good splitter. You can't throw a better one than that. And that's exactly what Andrew Bailey the Giants pitching coach was hoping he'd see early on in this game. Starts off right there above the knee and just bottoms out almost to the dirt. And Conforto, who is a good contact hitter, swinging right over the top of it. They haven't seen this version of Gosman. He's got the advantage on him. They truly have not. Pete Alonzo, home run derby champion, two times running, 25 home runs. Got enormous raw power. With a runner at first and one out. Fastball up and in. Well, if you go in, you better get it in because he is a short arm swinger and he loves middle in. So almost the opposite of Nimmo, who's thrived at home. Pete Alonso's done most of his good offensive work on the road. 17 home runs away from New York. That's a strike. Straight change. Play to pull, open up the right side of the infield. Alonso's going to do one thing. He's trying to hit the ball off the Coke bottle in left field. That's his goal on every pitch. And he's one of the few where you say, you know what? He might actually do it one day. Oh, he has the power to, to do th two things. He has the power to hit the Coke bottle, and he's got the power to hit the ball of McCovey Cove. And no right hander has ever done it, not even in batting practice. Nobody's ever done it. And and Pete Alonso could do it. He's that strong. If you were making a list of the candidates who would who would be possibilities, he'd be high on the list. Maybe number one. I think he's number one. He's behind in the count here, one and two, just getting started on this Monday night. First of three Giants Mets. New York's National League team, of course, the Giants' original home. There's always a little something special when the Giants play the Mets. One, two. That one is fouled out of play. Dangerous pitch. It's another one of those pitches you kind of have to warm up to. You don't always have it early in the game. What Buster Posey wanted was a fastball across the letter. He's in a one two count. He did not want to throw a ball in the middle of the strike zone, not to a guy with power. And that ball was right down the middle. See the batter's eye. It is advantage pitcher these first couple of innings. Quick move to first. Nimmo back safely. Cosman has a good move to first base. He's got very quick feet. Good athlete. Nimmo has only two steals in four tries. The Mets just don't have a lot of base stealing prowess. They've stolen 31 bases this year. For a little context, Giants have stolen 49. And you don't think of the Giants as a huge base stealing team. One, two in the dirt with the splitter. Wilmer Flores would be a big 
series for Wilmer chance to go up against his original big league team. Wilmer was a big time fan favorite in his years wearing the Mets uniform. They love him there. Mr. Met. <laughs> yeah, a lot of big moments for the Mets. Two two. Fouled off again. Another pitch where they wanted to get it across the letters and it's dropping down there just above the knees. I know it's 97 miles per hour, but it's hard to throw a fastball by Alonzo. Especially in the strike zone. Kevin Gosman being very deliberate in this first inning. 2 2. He got that one up, but Alonzo wouldn't chase. That's a perfect pitch. He had a 2 2 count. He had one more pitch to go out of the strike zone with. And Alonzo's credit, he lets it go by, but that's a perfect pitch. And he didn't miss the strike zone by much. You're not going to see many belt high strikes from Dan Asanya, the plate umpire. But that's exactly where Buster Posey is trying to get that fastball, and he finally got one. And from Alonzo's perspective, good take. Three and two. We'll see if Nimmo is going to take off. He does. And the pitch is grounded towards short. That'll keep the Mets out of the double play. Crawford throws out Alonzo. Two down. But the first runner in scoring position of the night. Ultimately, the big thing is that Gosman did get through Alonzo after a long battle. Yeah, that was a good battle. So now Dominic Smith. Dom Smith, a good hitter from the left side. He's a guy who's done damage against the Giants in the past. 253 average this year, 11 home runs. Smith takes low, ball one. First pitch split or change. Jeff McNeil, another left handed hitter, would be next. Mets don't have Francisco Lindor. They don't have Javi Baez. They don't have Jacob DeGrom. All three are on the injured list. Their biggest stars. That's a strike. It's a Mets team. I mean, you can look at it two ways. They've gone 12 and 18 since the All Star break, where they were not only in first place in the East, but seemed to be in a real good, comfortable spot. They've lost their lead in the division. They haven't been playing great, but they they are a desperate team. So it's not just Baez, Lindor, and DeGrom, although those are the biggest names. And Noah Syndergaard, they're hoping, actually has a chance to come back and contribute. He's contributing vocally these days. Yeah, I mean, he was very adamant about uh, the game last night, the tough travel assignment the Mets had. The Mets played the Dodgers, and they were the uh, the national game that started at seven o'clock in New York, and they probably didn't get out of New York till around midnight, and they had to fly west, and they probably didn't get to bed till probably five, maybe even six o'clock this morning. And uh, Syndergaard, who was on the injured list, he was uh, very upset that the, that it was allowed to have happen. And uh, I, I just don't think that's a positive thing this time of year. That's a negative thing. 2 2, Smith to left field. Darren Ruff circling in, and he makes a catch for out number three. Well, it wasn't totally easy for Kevin Gosman, but he gets through it now. Slater lineup is brought to you by your Bay Area GMC dealers. And no surprise with the lefty on the mound, the right handers are in there. Great to see Chris Bryant in there as well. He had a little hamstring tightness yesterday, but he says he's totally fine. So you got Slater, Bryant, Posey, Ruff, Longoria, Brandon Crawford, the one position player left handed hitter with Gosman, the pitcher, batting ninth. 
And they will face the lefty veteran Rich Hill who's making his fourth start fifth appearance with the Mets. 41 year old left hander 6'5", 220 pounds out of Boston Massachusetts in his 11th year or 12th year at the big league level. And six and four with a four zero five ERA tells you his year. But look at the strikeouts 103 against 43 uh, walks 113 innings and for a 41 year old guy tells you he's still got great stuff. And really one of the most creative curveball pitchers you'll you'll see. And he throws a, that pitch about 40 percent of the time. Yeah we're going to see it a lot. Slater takes a fastball for a strike to begin Rich Hill's night. And for Rich Hill I mean he's normally a three quarter release guy but with the curveball he can lower it to a high side arm and he can back speeds off it. Really creative. That's strike two. Well a lot of battles against the Giants in his years wearing the Dodgers uniform Giants president of baseball ops Farhan Zaidi knows Rich Hill very well from his time in L.A. He was a big part of some really good Dodgers teams. Oh and two to Slater. That is strike three called. Three pitches and Slater took them all. Well he's still waiting for that curveball. I mean one thing about Rich Hill he'll throw a lot of stuff at you. I mean he's got a four seamer a two seamer a curveball slider cutter changeup, but basically you're going to see fastballs and cutters. That's our StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud. Well it's a beautiful curveball when he's got it working. Here's Chris Bryant. And he's thrown all fastballs so far. I mean it surprised a lot of people he was pitching well for a Tampa Bay Rays team that is in the middle of the playoff race in the American League East and they traded him. And the Rays often do stuff like that they trade from a part of their team they think is a strength fortify a different part. Five pitches five fastballs five strikes zero swings and he had hit 90 miles per hour yet with the velocity on the fastball. I mean that is amazing. Well they definitely have a plan against him. <laughs> but I don't know if it includes the fastball. Oh and two. Tried to come inside and he just missed. You look at where the road that Rich Hill traveled in his big league career came up with the Cubs then he went to Baltimore then to Boston then to Cleveland then to the Angels then to the Yankees then back to Boston. Not done yet. Bryant to center field going back on it Nimmo for out number two. We'll get to that point but let's check the defense for the Mets quickly in their outfield from left to right it will be Smith Nemo and Conforto and the best arm is in right field Villar and Davis on the left side McNeil and Alonzo on the right side James McCann he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. Yes I need to hear the rest of the Rich Hill resume. Well after Boston he went to Oakland to the Dodgers to Minnesota then he went to Tampa and he finally found a home with the New York Mets. <laughs> Posey going after that first pitch fastball. He's not just going to take all the fastballs. Two quick outs for Rich Hill. I mean, you can learn a lot when you're hitting third in the lineup because you get to look at two guys in that first inning. And Buster is a guy that doesn't miss a whole lot that happens on a baseball field. One strike pitch. And he tried to change up for the first time. Well, Buster's seen Rich Hill a lot. On the ground foul. I don't know if we're going to see it tonight, but I always thought a great way to go after a guy that's 41. Fun on him. Because I don't know too many spry and agile. 41 year olds covering bunches that's not an easy play for him. Posey bounces it up the middle. McNeil will throw him out and the 41 year old with a pretty good start tonight retires the Giants in order. We go to the second nothing right side so you'll see more carry to right field. However as this wind comes into the face of the of the batters it will U turn and it will head out at a higher elevation about 90 feet out towards center field. That's why you look at the flags on top of Oracle Park and they're blown out. 
And I promise you, you, you miss all those cool arrows, that animation. We're going to show it to you. I promise. Oh, we will. We love that. That's great information. Jeff McNeil, first pitch swinging, ground ball to first. Wilmer Flores will get the out. You want arrows? We got arrows. Well, there you see the wind coming in around ground level, and then as it hits the stadium, it sort of boomerangs back out towards left field tonight. But not a lot of wind to right field, so that's where you, you're getting the short porch, and it truly has become a short porch. Right field carries better now than it ever has in the history of this ballpark. Yeah, and that's what I love about this is that's not just some generic thing that we throw up there every game to tell you the general conditions. No, that's specific to tonight, and it does. I mean, it really is interesting how right now a ball in the air to right field is not going to be touched. J.D. Davis takes high. Davis, good hitter, right-handed hitter, all the way to 93 average. It's out to right and it's going to drop for a base hit. First hit of the night for the Mets. Almost looks like he went up there trying to, to go to right field. Could be. So he's a one out base runner. And Jonathan VR, the shortstop, batting seventh tonight for the Mets, takes his first at bat. Guy's had kind of a wild career. His, his good years have been really good. He's, he's had a roller coaster kind of career, and he's having a good year this year. 13 home runs. Switch hitter. He's got some power. He's got a lot of speed. Strike one. Been hot the last 10 games, 12 for 36 with three big flies. Got to know where the hot spots are in your lineup, and uh, Villar is one of them right now. Oh, and two. Yeah, he had a pretty good weekend. It was a miserable weekend overall for the Mets against the Dodgers. The Dodgers kind of pounded him into submission by the end of it, but. This guy swung the bat pretty well against L.A. Pop up foul back out of play. Stays 0-2. That's a good pitch though. I mean both those fastballs he's throwing back to back have been above the hands. That's exactly where Buster Posey wanted him. J.D. Davis at first, one out. Another 0-2 pitch. Strike three swinging. Now he's starting to elevate that fastball with consistency, and that's a good strikeout pitch for him. Especially the guys who are good low ball hitters. And then for switch hitters, I mean, it, it, normally from the left side, they're low ball guys. Right side, they're high ball guys. But having that, that fastball that he can pound up around the letters, that's a weapon. Second Gosman strikeout, two down. And you get the eighth place hitter, James McCann, up. Gosman would love to get him and then make sure that the pitcher leads off next inning. He would also like a quick inning. He's got a chance to get it. He needed 24 pitches to get through the first. First one to McCann on the ground, foul. Giants are looking, and Alex Wood, you got to give him a ton of credit yesterday for the job that he did, but the Giants are looking for innings out of their starting rotation. Starters have not been going as deep into games. And the bullpens pay a little price. They've had to work really hard. They've been extremely effective. A 
one to McCann in the dirt outside. That McCann. was a slider. Broke out the slider. I think it's important if whatever you have throw Just put it in the mind that you can throw all your pitches over. McCann a Californian. From Santa Barbara. Mets gave him a pretty big deal. He's got an excellent defensive reputation. He's got some power. It's one and two. I, I was surprised that the White Sox let him go. I really was. Mets gobbled him up. He's just a he's there. He was the White Sox Buster Posey behind the plate. Miles Alanoff had a pretty good swing. And guys who are good defensive catchers that can handle staffs. It's such an asset to have. And the catcher spot has been a problem for the Mets the last few years. So I think. They were excited to get him. Their fans were clamoring for JT Real Muto. They wanted the, the big, big fish. Got him with the splitter. So Gosman gets a couple of strikeouts in the second, gave up a hit, no runs, still a nothing, nothing ball game. Well, Giants Quick Pick presented by Coors Light is a new predictive game for fans to play free through the ballpark app. Be one of three winners every home game, and if you happen to predict all seven questions correctly, you can win $1,000 in Alaska Airlines flight credit. So far this season, the Giants have had four perfect scores. Download the ballpark app to play Quick Pick from home or at Oracle Park. Do it. Here's Darren Ruff. Yeah, it's fun. Really fun. Against Rich Hill, who throws his first curveball of the game, and he missed high. Not even close. <laughs> That's why he never threw one in the first inning. Amazing, he retired Slater, Bryant, and Posey in the first on 11 pitches without throwing the curve. Rough to right center field. Conforto with a lot of room out there, one away. And up comes Evan Longoria. That's great to see Longoria back after all that time on the injured list. Missed almost 60 games for the Giants, came back on Saturday. Well, the only thing you can say is it, it, it's difficult to do. To miss that much time and then come back in and try and ratchet back up and, and be able to compete at the big league level. That's 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 a lot to ask. The only thing is that we've seen Longoria do it twice where he's had hand injuries that have put him on the shelf for six weeks and that's a long time but he's come back in, in both those instances. So he's got a good track record of being able to reinsert himself into a season having missed a, uh, a month and a half or more. And he took some rehab bad bats down at Triple A Sacramento. Not as many as Tommy Lastella, but he did take some games down there, trying to help get the timing right. Two and two. Hard to time up that 72 mile an hour curve. It's so hard to stay on it. Because you see it out of the hand of Rich Hill if you're hitting from the right side, and it looks like it's way off the plate away. But then it just keeps coming and coming back into the strike zone. So you have to stay on it. Got him swinging. Use the changeup. So two down, and now a word via WebEx by Cisco. We need that part. It's nearly done. Can you repeat that? That's better. It's done. With WebEx, the McLaren Formula One team is collaborating like never before. Introducing the WebEx Suite, driving hybrid work. Two outs, bases empty. Brandon Crawford, the only left handed hitter in the lineup, other than the pitcher, Kevin Gosman. 
Crawford goes after that first pitch. You know, it, it is weird when you see so much velocity, especially late in a ball game. You're seeing 95 plus day in and day out. And all of a sudden you see a guy who's way below the hit speed. The average fastball in the big leagues is 93 miles per hour. Rich Hill's average fastball is around 89. And uh, everything he throws off that is slower. So it's hard to get adjusted to it. I, you know I think the Giants have struggled. Relatively speaking. Against this style of pitcher. Crawford. That batting average has been on the move up. Perfect pitch at the knees two and two. The other thing too is lifetime Rich Hills had ownage on the Giants. Oh big time. Eight and two ERA in the twos. In a lot of starts. On the ground right side past the dive of Alonzo and that's the first Giants hit of the game. Well, he gets a big, slow breaking ball. Hangs in there. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. And unloads a swing and finds a little gap on the right side. Got to give Pete Alonso A for effort. Even if he catches, I don't know what he's going to do with it after that. <laughs> Not afraid to get dirty. Good attribute to be, to have if you're an infielder. So now Wilmer Flores against his old uniform. Takes the curveball for a strike. Rich Hill's a grunter also. He leaves the league in grunts. Fifteen home runs for Wilmer Flores. One and one. Nolan Ryan was a grunter. Now, if you're a hitter, that's a grunter. When you face Nolan Ryan, it would go. Uh -uh. With Rich Hill, it's. Uh -uh. <laughs> There's a little <laughs> delay there. <laughs> yep, yeah, just a gap. Rich Hill and Nolan Ryan are the polar opposites. They are the polar opposites. Other than the grunting. Oh yeah, they they're fraternity brothers in that regard. Well, after the first Giants hit, first base runner, a two ball, one strike count to Wilmer. And he hits a high fly ball, left center. Nimmo came in and had to wait a long time. It finally came down and he caught it. So the Giants get a hit. They don't score. And we go to the third inning in this scoreless game. And Wood improved to 9-0 this season and starts to follow a Giants loss. And the Giants, when he pitches, are 11-0 following a Giants loss. He is the stopper. That's a pretty good reputation to have. I think he's he's relishing that reputation. Rich Hill, the pitcher for the Mets, leads off against Gosman. He has a hit this year. Well, that's a good hack right there. No home runs in his career. He might be running out of time. Take Go Gosman now has command of the high fastball and he's got his split. So he's got his release point now. He is locked in. O2. He struck him out with the splitter. And he knows it. Well, this Friday, members of the 415 are invited to a members only Orange Friday watch party at Oracle Park. You can join them by becoming a member right now. The 415 also includes a set of 10 vouchers, redeemable for tickets in the 415 supporter section. You get exclusive gifts and game day food and local beer specials. Become a founding member at sfgiants.com slash the 415. So that'll be a fun event. Yeah, that that'll be a hoot. Here's Brandon Nimmo who walked to start the game. It's kind of what he does. Fastball right on the inside.
Well, a lot like Tommy Lastella, I mean, that he'll take pitches, not afraid of a two strike count. He'll move the ball around. And if he draws a walk, he sprints to first base. Pete Rose style. That's not the worst guy to copy in that regard. Charlie Hustle. On the ground right into the Giants defense and Crawford I don't know if it kicked up on him or what. But we almost never see that he just couldn't make the play. Well he hits it 105 miles per hour. And he just gets hit low in the heel. And you're right it did come up on him a little bit. Yeah, it makes him shake his head. Yeah, no matter how hard the ball's hit, Brandon's figuring he's going to make that play. So now Conforto with a runner on. <laughs> Giants have a defense right now in their infield wood. If they hit a ground ball to Crawford, it's going to be tough to turn a pair. Yeah. We see this sometimes. Longoria can't get there. Just start to locate above the belt now with, with consistency. I mean, you just know that a guy coming out of the bullpen is going to be able to locate down around the knees. That's where you warm up. But being able to elevate to the high corners of the strike zone, that takes a, a little bit of touch. It doesn't come automatically. 0 oh 2 on the ground. Longoria who moved over to that side and the Giants can't turn the double play they do get the lead runner in the two strike situation they shuffle that alignment out there. Take a look at the rotation and the way that Longoria took the ball I mean he was really at an awkward angle he had to completely get turned and make a little flip throw. Just not enough on it to get the pair. Conforto runs pretty well. So two down, and it does mean you got to face Pete Alonzo, the power hitter, third spot on the Mets lineup. Almost hit him, and I think it did hit him. Really upset you when you're a pitcher and you hit a guy with a specialty pitch. Trying to throw the split, and it just took off, and, and it just skims his jersey. I mean, that's even worse. Didn't even feel it. If you're going to hit a guy, you want to at least leave a bruise. <laughs> so Pete goes to first, Conforto to second, two on, two out. Mets don't have a hit in this inning, but the error and the hit batter. Well, this is what Gosman's trying to do. He's trying to pick up Crawford for the air. Dom Smith late on that fastball. It's good to see movement on that 96 mile an hour heater. Little flat slide that runs away from the lefty. By the time Smith committed to it, that ball was out of the strike zone. John but Solano is about as deep against this hitter as we see him play out in shallow right field. Giants are using some pretty extreme defensive maneuverings here against some of these Mets hitters. And you can't question the Giants defensive positioning it's it's been a net positive in a big way. Osman's been great with runners in scoring position trying to get through this 0 2 on the ground and Solano out there in right field waits for Flores to get planted and throws him out 
So Gosman works around the air. The Mets don't score. Solano. Com slash California. See the bear and get chances to win chill prizes. Coors Light, keeping California chill. 2021 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, celebrate responsibly. Donovan Solano against Rich Hill. And he takes a strike on the inside. Nothing, nothing ball game. Bottom of the third. 8 9 1 hitters coming up for the Giants against the 41 year old lefty. Looking very comfortable on the mound here in San Francisco. You know, one thing we try to do around the ballpark, we try to sample the, the food that you can get here at the ballpark, and we had a sandwich today that uh, we had to have before from the Pita Euros up at the view level section 317 really good. It was nice of you to go all the way up there and get them for us. Well yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you like Mediterranean food the Pita Euros G Y R O S check it out. We give it two thumbs up. Yeah really good. Great homemade hot sauce. Yeah that was to die for. So one and two to Donovan Solano. It is kind of a hobby of mine to sample around. <laughs> yeah. There's just so many different things to have at this ballpark. Oh. Trying to backdoor him with that curveball. Full count. Well, that's a big pitcher. You got the pitcher coming up next, Gosman. You get on base with the pitcher coming up. Well, any time you get that leadoff hitter on, especially by way of a walk, that ticks off a pitcher. Curveball hit to center field and hit pretty well. Nimmo all the way back onto the warning track before he caught it. Mets definitely set their defense to make that play. Let's take a look at the Giants on the go this season. And you can do that. Stream the games on NBCSportsBayArea.com and the My Teams app. Brought to you by your NorCal Honda dealers. So no bunt situation for Kevin Gosman. This is where he really thrives, where he just wants to swing the bat. Well, he's going to throw a little lob into left field off of the, the left-hander, Rich Hill. And I can't believe Dom Smith isn't playing even closer. In left. Kevin Gosman's hitting 216. Oh, he can hit. He's got a good eye. I mean, what was he like? Two for 51 lifetime before the season yeah. started? Something like that. Now he's on fire. He's by far leading the Giants pitching staff in hits. Just don't throw him a fastball down the middle. He can't handle that one. He's got eight hits in 37 at bats. Not bad. If the Giants have one Achilles heel, it's their pitcher hitting. Not very good. But Gosman has been the exception this year. <laughs> he hey, buzzed him. If you're not a great hitter, get five pitches at least out of your at bat, and he's about to do that. And he almost gets hit in the dome with a curveball. <laughs> 2-2. Two, two. Hey, spoiled it foul. Pitch number six coming up. You'll see at least another one. Number seven coming up. Be a pest. Seventh pitch of the at bat for Kevin Gosman. And a curve rolled over to second. He put it in play, but he's out number two.
Kind of hit it like he threw it. Big slow breaking ball and hit a big slow ground ball. I'm betting that Austin Slater is going to swing the bat this time. Well, his first at bat, he took three fastballs in the outside corner. See you later. He yeah, was, I don't, I don't had, think he knew what hit him. He'd been thinking about the curveballs he was going to see all day long. He didn't see any. Fastball away. Came back in and did not get the call. Well, I think the only reason he didn't get, get the call is because he sat up away. If he sits up inside, that's a strike. Yep. Here's his first curveball. So he wasn't sitting on that either, or at least not that one. Yeah, you don't want to swing at that one. No. That's perfect. First time through. The Giants order. Rich Hill, only the one single allowed. That's it. Slater hits the curve into center field, shallow. So for Rich Hill, it's another one, two, three inning. We go to the fourth. John Miller's going to join Mike on the TV side. It is Giants nothing, Mets nothing. At Hall of Famer, my pal John Miller. Welcome. And we've got a pitcher's duel going on so far. And uh, what's your assessment of Kevin Gosman and uh, the use of his splitters so far? Uh, I think Gosman looks the best he's looked. And uh, two things I, I'm impressed with tonight. Number one is fastball command, especially to be able to elevate it up in the zone and now he's got the kill pitch again. He's got, got that good split that's been very effective. He said he had a good side between his this start tonight and his last start, and it really looks like it's paying dividends because he's hitting spots tonight. Well, he got a strike there with the uh, the split, and the count is 0-1 to Jeff McNeil. Nothing, nothing. Each team has one hit as we start the fourth inning. A ball and a strike now. This Mets team, and I think the feeling in New York was that offense would be a strength for them, but they really have, have not hit that well as a team so far this year. A lot of injury problems, of course. Well, that one drops right in there at the knees. One and two, the count. It's a good split right there. Now he's got a chance to. to Start one off just above the knees and let it drop down in the dirt. Or you could try the high fastball. Two and two now to McNeil. I think the Mets fans are kind of getting used to the idea of McNeil as just being an all around outstanding hitter, a guy who's going to hit over 300, 320. But so far this year, Hitting only 259. Two and two the count. And slashes it foul off the left field line. JD Davis, a right handed hitter, is on deck. Mets have, including the pitcher, Rich Hill, they have six hitters who will bat left handed against the right hander, Gosman. Two and two the count. And there it is, the one you were talking about, Mike. Strike three. That is as nasty as he's got right there. That's five strikeouts, and they're all swing and miss strike threes. And when you strike out a hitter like McNeil on a swing and miss, you've made a great pitch. Just absolutely dies up there. Arm action identical to that of the fastball, sets it up. And McNeil out there reaching. Perfect pitch. J.D. Davis now. He got a base hit, and that's still the only hit for the Mets in the game. He came up in the second. Right back to the screen. Had a big rip and a 96 mile an hour fastball over the plate there. Another guy from Elk Grove. Went to Elk Grove High School. Seen a lot of guys in the big leagues this year from Elk Grove. Dylan Carlson with the Cardinals. We saw Rowdy Telez. Dom Nunez. On one the count to J.D. Davis. That splitter is bounced foul. 
And the count is quickly 0-2 to J.D. Davis. Jonathan Villar is on deck. Beautiful night here in San Francisco, and it's that part of the evening where the the setting sun is being reflected off the picture windows over in the East Bay Hills, Berkeley, Oakland. Panoramic look. At Oracle Park in downtown San Francisco. Oh, and to the count. And a fastball at 97, foul to the screen. He's topped out at 97, and every time he's hit 97, it's been in a two strike count. So he's definitely reaching back to add in that situation. You can see Davis got a pretty quick bat. The question with Davis is always is there a position for him to play? He's at third base tonight. 0 and 2 the count. Base hit to right. Wilmer Flores. Slipped as he tried to make the dive. I don't know if he was going to get to it anyway. That ball was hit hard. That's two opposite field base hits for Davis tonight. And I, I'm convinced that's what he's trying to do. And is that a good approach if you're facing a guy with a great split? I, I think anytime you have a guy that has a, a fastball that, that could go high 90s like Gosman and have a, a very good. Off speed pitch, whether it be a changeup or a split, I, I think opposite way is the way to go. He just can't get greedy with that type of uh, velocity differential. So the guy from Elk Grove agrees with you. It seems there's a ball just a little bit low on that splitter to Jonathan Villar, who struck out his first time. Well, he came back down around the knees, but with a fastball this time. One and one. Blew 97 right through both knees. Lara has good speed, not an easy guy to double up. Another fastball. That's showing him a lot of respect with the fastball. One and two, the count to the switch hitting the yard, who is out of the Dominican Republic, 30 years old now. There's McCann, big catcher, on deck. The outfield toward the left field side against the yard, who is batting from the left side, as you can see. And he got a piece of that one. Yeah, he did well to catch a piece. Another good split. Dodgers who also had the cross country flight from New York last night are now in the top of the third inning against the Pirates. Nothing nothing in L.A. Dodgers. With a, a bullpen game going. Laid off that high fastball. Two and two the count. I did uh, run into Kevin Pillar before the game. He was over chatting with his old teammate, Brandon Crawford. And I asked him, so what time did you get in this morning? He said, well, he checked his uh, watch when he got to the hotel room because he wanted to know if it was too early to call his wife. And he said it was 10 minutes to 5 Pacific time. And he walked in the room. Right by him. The high hard one. Strike three. Six strikeouts now. Six swing and miss strike three strikeouts. And again we talked about his ability to elevate that fastball and here he takes advantage of it. And sends Villar packing. Two seam movement. And he just couldn't get that top hand on it. So I mean if you get into room around five o'clock you get your luggage and uh, maybe asleep by six maybe. So a long night for the Mets. James McCann the hitter out two down runner at first. 
and a fastball right in there for a called strike. And it's on one. And Gabe Kapler was talking about that before the game. He said, hey, it's it is part of the game. You hate it when it happens to you, you get that kind of travel. But he said the Giants have had plenty of times where they haven't been too happy with the travel. But to complain about it openly, and we've had some comments from Noah Syndergaard is on the the injured list, and he was upset about it. But it doesn't serve any purpose. It's a negative. What Syndergaard should have said was, "Yeah, you know what? We'll deal with it. We're thinking about having a pajama party on the plane. <laughs> Just something to make light of it, because everybody has to deal with it. Both teams had to deal with it." Ooh, good pitch. Two and one. But it's it's really uh, important, especially this time of year, that you don't open up a can of negative because you can't put it back in the can once you open it. And once one guy gets negative, then another guy, and then five, and then pretty soon half the team is moaning and groaning. Time taken as McCann backs away. The pitcher, Rich Hill, on deck. You know, you, you sounded almost a little bit like you're. One time manager Roger Craig there. Well Roger was really really good about wiping out a negative if he heard one. Because he knew how poisonous they were. Hit hard to center field. Base hit. The second and stopping there J.D. Davis. So McCann. With a very solid single. Putting two men on with two men out. And bringing up Rich Hill the pitcher. Take a look at the fastball challenge right down Broadway and McCann looking for it sends it right back where it came from 103 miles per hour Rich Hill who started the year made 19 starts with Tampa Bay in the American League so he didn't have a whole lot of occasion to bat for them he is now one for 11 overall for the year and a fastball all in one Rich Hill 41 years old he had his only hit of the year oddly enough with Tampa Bay he struck out in the third we're in the fourth inning nothing nothing and quickly strike two he's Come right down the middle with a couple of fastballs here. 0 and 2. Mets with two hits in the inning. A single by Davis. He's at second. A single by McCann. He's at first. Well, he was able to foul that one off. I mean, that was just almost like a pepper swing. Just trying to make contact, put it in play. Buster seeing that swing right here, you're going to see a split or some kind of a breaking ball to get away from that fastball because he was too close to putting that thing in play. There's the splitter, and there's the strikeout. Three strikeouts in the inning, seven in the game. Brian Posey Rupp. Well, the Milwaukee Brewers are coming to San Francisco. They're going to visit the Giants for a four game series August 30th through September 2nd. And the cal calendar will flip into September with the Brewers in town. The Giants are battling for a postseason berth. So come on out and cheer for your Giants by getting tickets right now at sfgiants.com slash tickets. The Brew Crew coming to Oracle Park. As they look from. Delafield bleachers at Oracle Park on this Monday night. Another night game tomorrow. And then the day game on Wednesday is Chris Bryant leads off here against Rich Hill. And the curve is off the outside for ball one. Mets pitch the gap in right center and give the line on both sides of the field. Changed up on him. One and one. There you see the gap pinch in right center. And left fielder Dominic Smith is pulled over about eight steps 
towards the gap in left center so the both lines wide open. Very high. Two and one the count now. Buster Posey on deck Darren Ruff due up third. Rich Hill said that. He's 41 years old still loves it. A curveball is pulled foul on the ground and it's two and two he said. I, I'll probably still be pitching when I'm 70. I'll be like uh, the spaceman Bill Lee. Jim Barr. I mean Jim Barr left the big leagues went right to the senior leagues and pitched another 15 years. And for Rich Hill. I think he's serious when he says it. And good for him. Two and two the count to. Chris Bryant. That curve. Opened up the season one year in Montreal and I was pitching against Bill Lee. And I went seven innings, struck out ten. Good outing, right? I gave up two runs. We got beat two nothing, and you know who knocked both runs in? Bill Lee. He could hit? He was a real good hitter. I never forgave him for that day. Nemo coming in to medium center and Bryant is out number one. He is 0 for 2. And now Buster Posey. And Hill has done a great job of keeping the Giants from real hard contact. The best hit ball probably Solano's ball that made it out to deep right center, but the wrong part of this yard. I mean that's that's what pitching is upsetting the time of hitting and that's why Rich Hill is out there at age 41 he's still really good at determining how hard you hit the ball off of him it's controlling contact off the inside the buster who grounded out to second his first time All right, there's a group. That one is hit hard into the gap left center field toward 399 to the wall and it hangs in under the wall there. Nimmo had to go and dig it out a double for Buster Posey. And that was loud. And that resonated all the way through the Giants dugout. Get an 88 mile an hour fastball right over the middle and Buster said yeah that's where I like him. 103 miles per hour right through the gap. Definitely the loudest contact the Giants have had tonight. Now Darren Ruff. This is the first time the Giants have had a runner into scoring position in this game. Ruff hit a fly ball to right center his first time. Ball one. Is the curveball at 71 miles an hour? One ball, one strike. Rough in the big leagues, and it's been his ability to do damage against left handed pitching that has gotten him here. He's got seven home runs and only 84 official at bats against lefties this year. Down and in, two and one. That's one every 12 at bats. That's pretty good. But he's had a lot more opportunities, I think, than in most years of his career against right handers. And he's done damage against right handers, too. Line drive, base hit, left field. Posey's going to be waved by Wotus. Here comes the high arching throw, cut off, and back to first is rough. One nothing, Giants. Well, Ron Wotus knows that Dominic Smith, the left field, does not have a good arm. No hesitation whatsoever. Ball hit right on the button off the batter rough, and Buster Posey read base hit all the way. Had a nice jump. 
And an easy wave him in from Ron Wotus. There you see, tried to get in tight to Darren Ruff. Digs it out. And Buster Posey with a good jump. And you can see Ron Wotus wave him in, not an instant of hesitation. The Mets, meanwhile, are contending that they thought Ruff did not make it back to first base. So they have challenged this call. We've got a replay review. And I guess that's why Alonzo was so adamant because he, he stepped right on top of his foot. Oh, nice at bat. Okay, one more look. Watch the left or the right foot step on the foot of Alonzo. And there, that. And then his foot came off the bag. Yeah, they got a chance. I mean, right there making the call was Jeremy Reak. And I think the Mets have a chance on this one. I mean, it looks like his foot just comes off the bag while the tag is being applied. Well, it, it comes off of the foot. And he definitely was not in contact with the base when he was when he was touched. And Alonzo could get badly hurt putting his foot right in the middle of the bag like that. So there is the call. And having seen those replays, we're not surprised. Now it's not something you try and do if you're a first baseman because you can't get hurt. So it just kind of became an awkward play. He found the base trying to catch the ball. And it wound up costing the Giants. So two down, base is empty, a run in. Longoria right to second base where nobody is, base hit. And that was by design. We watched him put his swing together back in, in March in Scottsdale, and, and he did a lot of, the, of this, what he did here, going to right field, especially against lefties. And really got him a solid front shoulder, and it looks to me like he's trying to do it again to get reestablished, coming off the IL, having missed two months. Crawford hit a single his first time, and that is a foul. High in the air and out of play. Not a lot of loud contact at all the first time through the lineup for the Giants, but now the second time through, now the line drives are starting to happen. So they're making adjustments to Rich Hill. Crawford hitting 300 for the season now. Drop down for the side. That's what Rich Hill could do with that curveball. He's just so creative with the arm angles, and he can back speed off. He can put speed on. And he's got as much finesse with that curveball as anybody I've ever seen. Forty percent of what he throws will be that curveball. Base hit through that open hole. Longoria will stop at second. Conforto comes up throwing. Another base hit right side off of a big curveball for Rich Hill for Brandon Crawford. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Hanger right there at the belt. That ball should get hit. So a uh, next Eve a meeting on the mound when you need business communications for the office the home office. And everywhere in between, choose next Steva. So Jeremy Hefner, the pitching coach for the Mets, going to come out. Give Rich Hill a bit of a breather. And 60 pitches now. But a lot of them have come in this inning. 
four consecutive hits in fact. And that out at first base that was a big play. As it was followed by two more hits. Well, the right guy's coming up and Wilbur Flores I mean he, he had a great swing he just missed one in his last at bat he's been thinking about it. Yeah, he takes a shot at that big curveball pulling it foul. On one. The former Met. He is. One home run away from equaling. The most home runs he's ever hit in a full season. He had a couple of years with 16 home runs. As a Met. He's got 15 right now for the Giants. And the fastball crowds him just off the corner. Yeah, but you'll wanted that one. On the inside corner, McCann tried to frame it in. Almost got it. And that curveball hangs very high at 69 miles an hour. Two and one. This next pitch will be his 20th pitch of the inning. The first inning that he's really had the high pitch count. Now that last curveball is going to get somebody up in the Mets bullpen. Two on, two out. Fastball back to the screen. Uh, he's having some healthy rips at him. Miguel Castro, the right hander, is the one who will start throwing now in the Mets bullpen. Some guys just look like they have a good fastball before you even see him throw a pitch. And Miguel Castro looked like that kind of guy. That is just foul. And the third baseman, Davis, was hugging the foul line. He was right on the line. And going foul might have been the only way to get, get it past him along the line there. Two and two the count. On the right, manager Luis Rojas. Dave Joust, the bench coach alongside. Rojas, the son of Felipe Alou. Dropped down from the side, and that one is yanked foul in the air. Hey, look who got it. Two and two the count to Wilmer Flores. Base hit could mean a run. Longoria at second, Crawford at first. Ooh, change up. And he had a big rip at that one, too. He's laying out some fur right now, no doubt. Every swing he's had, he's had his both legs into it. And a guy who has as much off speed stuff as Rich Hill, I mean, when he sees a guy having that much balance in his swing, that's cause for concern. And every speed he's throwing at Flores, he's been on it. Four hits in a row here by the Giants a double by Posey, a single by Ruff. Longoria single, Crawford single. Two on, two out. Left center field. That gets down for a base hit. Longoria scores, Crawford to third. The throw cut off by VR, the shortstop. Two nothing Giants, their fifth consecutive hit. I mean, you can just see it the hole at bat from Flores. I mean, he was in tune. And now all of a sudden Castro gets the red alert get him going. Because they're sensing that Rich Hill's night's coming to a conclusion. There's the pitch to hit out over the plate at the belt. And once again floor is completely locked lower body completely timed. And that. Will be the end of the night for Rich Hill. Luis Rojas on his way to the mound. Donovan Solano. Due up with runners at first and third. Two runs in. 
and Castro will make his way in. Pitching change for the Mets. Two nothing. The Giants out in front here. Two men on. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune up and break experts. So Miguel Castro, the new pitcher for the Mets. Castro, 6'7, 205 pounder. He's 26 years of age. He's in his fifth year at the big league level, and he throws hard. 54 strikeouts in 49 and a third. Got a fastball that pumps it up there mid to high 90s, more highs than mids. And he's also got a slider and a changeup. But I mean, he throws his changeup and slider as much as he throws the fastball. Been a busy man. This is his 50th appearance of the year. 3.1 earned run average, 49 and a third innings, only 35 hits allowed. But he has walked 29 and he hit five. Tommy Lestella, the pinch hitter. And he curves him for a cold strike, and it's 0 and 1. I say curveball, 85 miles an hour with a break to it. Maybe that was his slider. Oh, and two. Another breaking ball. La Stella, who had a three hit game yesterday. The Giants pinch hitters as a group have hit 11 home runs this year. Although they, as a group, have not hit well for batting average, only 184. Castro tried to end this inning. Kevin Gosman on deck. Two runs in for the Giants. So Hill ends up going three and two thirds. Off the inside. One and two. The longer the at bat goes, the more it favors Tommy Lestella. More pitches he sees, better swing he'll have. That's just foul. Wow. But the man who made the call, uh, Rayak, the first base umpire, he was right there. Whoa, just a little bit wide. And there you see that Rayak had a great look at it. One and two to Tommy Lestella. Crawford at third, Flores at first. There goes Flores. Hit hard to right field, but right to Conforto. 99 miles an hour off the bat, but right to Conforto. Two nothing Giants. Native about the express written consent of the San Francisco Giants Baseball Club, LLC. Giants baseball on NBC Sports Bay Area is brought to you by WebEx. The future of work is hybrid. WebEx by Cisco. Darkness settling in over the city of San Francisco. We're at Oracle Park. On 3rd and King Streets, 24 Willie Mays Plaza on the shores of McCovey Cove. The Giants have taken a 2-0 lead as we move to the 5th inning. Tommy Lestella, after pinch hitting for Solano, stays in to play second base now. And for the Mets, the top of the batting order coming up against Kevin Gosman, Brandon Nimmo, then Conforto, two lefties, and then Alonzo, the power swinging right handed batter, coming up here. On one, the count to Nemo. First pitch split. Nice one. Pitch count a little high for Gosman. Ideally, you want to be 75 or less at the end of the fifth.
Diving, Lostello to his feet. Not in time, and he just couldn't quite get a grip on it initially. Otherwise, he would have had a chance to throw him out, and it was close as it was. Kai Correa checking with the video room in the clubhouse. Well, Tommy Lostello is checking out his wrist. Let's take a look at the effort. Lands hard on his wrist, and it looked like he may have rolled his left wrist over when the mid hit the ground. Couldn't quite get it clean. That's close. But I think he was safe. Yeah, safe. A for effort, though. Nimmo has reached for the third straight time. He had a walk in the first, reached on an error by Crawford in the third. Now a single. And ball one to Conforto. Fourth hit for the Mets. Brandon Nimmo, Gabe Kapler, Giants manager, was talking about him before the game. He said he's he's like a, a Giants hitter. He's up there looking for his pitch. Doesn't go out of the zone very often. He was impressed with with Nimmo's game and his approach. There's ball two now to Conforto. Again with Crawford there if, if ball hit is hit right to Crawford it's going to be tough to turn a pair. I don't know if they can. If he has to move anywhere to his left at all. There's. Almost no chance for it to be a double play. Longoria now who had stayed over near third base. Now with a two and one count moves over to shortstop. So he's a little closer it makes it a little bit easier. To turn to. Two and two. So now with two strikes, they bring Longoria over to the second base side. Crawford goes back to straight shortstop. And from that defense there, they can turn a pair. You took it. Good pitch, good take. There is Alonzo, the big home run slugger for the Mets on deck. Dominic Smith in the hole. Three and two. Nemo runs and a foul into the upper deck. Nimmo will go back. Nimmo, two steals this year in four tries. And he's looking over to his third base coach, Gary D. Sarcina. Some Mets fans out in right field. Two nothing Giants, runner at first, nobody out. Nimmo was running the last pitch. There he goes again. And it's a walk. Two men on with nobody out. Nimmo at second, Conforto at first, and here is Alonzo. Yeah, he leads the Mets in hitting into double plays. He's hit into 13 this year. Well, he hit a double play ball in the first inning, but the count had gone to three and two, and Nimmo ran with the pitch. So they kept themselves from the double play in that instance. Alonzo got hit by the pitch in the third inning. One ball, no strikes. Alonzo has hit 25 home runs. Yeah. 
That's a base hit right center field into the gap. And it goes through all the way out there 415. And the Mets will tie the game here. Alonzo heading for third. The relay by La Stella. It's a triple. Two to two. Just a perfect gap splitter. Opposite gap. You can see the hanging split, and he hits the ball 113 miles per hour. No outfielder had a chance to get to this one before it got to the 415 mark in right field and right center. So we got a brand new ball game. And the go ahead run is 90 feet away. Dominic Smith comes up. He is flied out to left and grounded out to the second baseman. Infield halfway on the right. Ball one. So not going to be a shutdown inning for Gosman. And right now he's fighting for his life. He needs a strikeout. One and one now. Blew it by him. One and two. First triple of the year, by the way, for Alonzo. And the third career triple for the big guy. Two years ago was the last time he hit a triple. Look out. Wow. High and tight. Well, he almost launched into that one. 97 mile an hour reach back velocity and it almost gets him. Spins him around. Blocked in the dirt by Posey, keeping Alonzo at third. And another full count. Jeff McNeil on deck. There's no activity in the Giants bullpen. Nothing going on. Next pitch is going to be number 90, and now Gabe Capper calling down to Craig Albert as bullpen coach. Tagging at third, Alonzo, medium left field. Here comes Alonzo, and he scores easily. And the Mets have gone ahead three to two. So a nice at bat from Smith to get the sack fly and a two strike count. Now Andrew Bailey will come out to chat with Gosman. Third time through the order in the Mets. Get two quick runs, an infield hit by Nemo, more or less an infield hit. Andrew Bailey coming out there just to give Jay Jackson a chance to get loose. Conforto followed the Nimmo single with a walk, and then Alonzo hit the triple out to the 415 side. There's Jay Jackson. One out of the inning, three runs in. McNeil has grounded out to first and struck out. Neil up on the bat about three inches with a choke. It's great. I mean, when Hunter Pitts talks about it, why do you have it? Why do you choke up with a bat? He goes, because I like Barry Bonds here with a choke, and so do I. <laughs> McNeil may say the same thing. Right to Wilmer Flores. Man, did he hit that one hard. 
two down. I mean, he throws that right on the inside corner, and McNeil just spinned on it. And uh, Giants had Flores in the right spot there. He didn't have a whole lot of time to get to it. He hit it 98 miles an hour. Two down, and here is J.D. Davis, who's hit two singles. Giants got two runs in the fourth, but the Mets have answered with three here in the fifth. Just missed him. One ball, no strikes. Now, Gosman spots due to lead off for the Giants in the bottom of the fifth, and that 93 pitch count probably going to mean that it is nice getting close to being over. He had a 24 pitch fourth inning. This is his 21st pitch in the fifth. Right to third. Wow. So two outs on just streaks of lightning to end the inning. Three to two New York. Uniforms as they do on all Tuesday home games tomorrow. Then the day game in the sunshine on Wednesday. Tickets available right now at sfgiants.com slash tickets. Now the Giants come up trailing three to two. And Mike Yastrzemski is the pinch hitter for Gosman. And ball one from Miguel Castro at 99 miles an hour. In the Mets notes they say that Castro his average speed on his sinker his two seamer is 98 miles an hour. That's his average with that pitch. And that slider is in there for a called strike and it's one and one now to Yastrzemski. Alex Dickerson on deck. Another one that's too low two and one the count. Here's Dickerson. Side. Davis with the jump pivot, the snap throw, got him. One away. Take a look as Davis moving to his right. It's going to have to shoot from the hip. I think third basemen are very well equipped to do that. Davis got a great arm. Nice play. Now Dickerson bats for Austin Slater who was 0 for 2 against Rich Hill the starter. Dickerson who's hit three pinch hit home runs. See the movement on that one at 99 miles an hour. 99 two seam. Lots of movement fastball. He got a very low strike on that one. One and one the count. Chris Bryant on deck. Well off the outside. Two and one the count. Chance had that string of hits in the fourth inning. But uh, it was it was such an odd play. Where they threw behind Ruff as he was going back to first base. He got back to the bag in time. That ball is hammered. Deep right field. It is off the pillar between the fourth and fifth archways. Slipping was Conforto, and his throw is right there, but too late. Not a whole lot on it as he slipped and was falling as he threw it. Just a little lazy breaking ball that didn't do a whole lot, kind of laid out over the middle of the plate at 85. And Alex Dickerson puts a jolt into it. And that made a loud noise coming off the wall. There you see the slip from Conforto. And Conforto plays it beautifully off the carom. Thought initially he'd have a chance, but then when his footing gave way, not a whole lot on the throw. 
So a one out double. Bryant is flat out to center field twice. One ball, no strikes. But going back to that play with with Ruff going back to first. I mean, just a crazy play. I mean, he's just going back to the bag, and Alonzo's foot's right on top of the bag, and he landed right on it. One and one the count now. Power on power right there. And good look at that two feet fastball that's moving so well for Castro. And a good low ball hitter in Bryant going down there. Not quite get to it. But that's strength on strength. Checked his swing. An appeal. No, says Ray Act, the first base umpire. Two and one the count. Mets have a left hander Aaron Luke heating up in their bullpen now. Base hit could tie the game. Two and one the count. Hit well to center field. Nimmo back still going back and goodbye over the center field wall and the Giants jump back ahead. Chris Bryant goes deep. Talk about the strength that Chris Bryant, I mean, a good low ball hitter. And Castro comes at him with a lazy breaking ball that drops right over the middle of the plate, right at the knee. And Bryant says, That I like. Buster Posey, 100 miles an hour on the inside. Just takes on the deep part of the yard and carries it right on out of here. And for Brian, that's home run number 20 on the year. And this place is still buzzing. On the outside, strike two. That ball jumped off his bat, according to StatCast, at 107 miles per hour. Wow. Down and into Buster. Posey ripped a double. Into the gap in left center, his last time, and that started the two run fourth inning rally. He's also grounded out. He's one for two in the game. Two and two. Bryant's home run, by the way, for the Giants, the 177th time that they've hit a home run this year. Most in the majors. So I guess I, I think that was a 94 mile an hour changeup. Believe it or not, there is such a thing. Well, it, it, it was slower than 100, so I guess that was it, huh? Yeah, 94 miles an hour. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was very effective. And now Lamont Wade Jr. will enter the game. As a pinch hitter for Darren Ruff. Now the pitcher is due up third in the sixth inning for the Mets. So it, it appears that Rojas really he just wants Castro to finish this inning so he can pinch hit for him in the sixth. Well, that's a break for the Giants getting a. Uh, Wade to hit against a right hander. Remember Luke who's the only lefty in the bullpen for the Mets. He's out. He was getting ready to go. So Luis Rojas the skipper for the Mets. He's rolling the dice right here. There's that two seamer at ninety nine miles an hour. I don't know if that thing is hittable. Puts it out where he put it. They've got the overshift on the infield against him. Well, there it is. You see that movement speeding away from the left-handed batter. 
Well, he's got a little anger behind that thing now. You give up a two run homer, it'll make it feel a little harder. He took it, great eye. Two and two. And the Mongolia on deck. Jade Jackson getting ready in the Giants bullpen for the sixth inning. And a check swing on that changeup and appeal. No, says John Lipka. He did not. Three and two the count. Wade also chokes up in the bat a little bit. Three and two the count. Right down the middle. And the inning is over. But Dickerson, a pinch hit double, and then Chris Bryant. Tell it bye bye, baby. Over the center field wall. Giants back ahead, four to three. Cam provides great shots of the playing field, Giants dugout, and all the action in the cove. Pretty cool shot. Four to three, the Giants are leading, and uh, a pitching change when it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune up and brake experts. So, Jay Jackson going to take the ball, start this inning number six. 15th time he's come in with a 2 0 record, 21 strikeouts and 14 and a third. Those are great numbers. He's been tough to hit. Jonathan Villar, the shortstop, a switch hitter, batting left handed. 0 oh 1. With Jay Jackson, you're going to get a fastball that's mid to high 90s. He's got a cutter and a slider. Likes to stay on a corner. VR has struck out twice his two at bats against Gosman. That's a base hit right through the hole where Lamont Wade has taken up now. He stayed in as the right fielder. Yastrzemski stayed in as the center fielder. And Bryant has moved from right field over to left field. Here's McCann, the catcher who hit a single back in the fourth inning, struck out his first time. Well, a lot of action these last couple of innings. The Giants got two runs in the fourth. The Mets got three in the fifth. The Giants got two more in their half of the fifth. We've had some of those lead changing hands innings. And Jay Jackson's Trying to stop that trend. It's bunted. Longoria has no play. Two men on with nobody out, and a pinch hitter will be coming up. Well, the defense opened it up for McCann. And he knows the pitcher spot's going to get pinch hit for, so he goes, if they're going to give it to me, we're down a run, I'm going to take it. And it's a perfect bunt. VR came tearing around second base, and Longoria wanted to make a play on him, but Lestella wasn't over there yet, so he he didn't force the issue. And Blankenhorn is going to be the pinch hitter now for Castro. Travis Blankenhorn. Now watch the Stella. Now he's going to first base once he sees the bunt. Now he realizes that, wait a second, I'm going to head over there. And he just couldn't get over the bag in time for Longoria to have a target. There was a slight opening there as Villar did overrun the bag. 
And maybe that's why he overran it so much. He saw where Listella was headed as he ran by him. Good point. Just off the outside, ball one to Blankenhorn. 222 average. It's only been a 19 games all told this year. He was with Minnesota earlier in the year. Got a piece of it. That got a piece of Buster Posey. The plate umpire. A Sogna will give Buster a little time to uh, try and shake that off. One ball, one strike. The Mets threatening again. Two men on, nobody out. Two and one. Slattering the dirt, fish ain't biting. The, the top of the order is coming up. Nemo, Conforto, Alonzo. This is a big, big get right here for Jay Jackson. Jose Alvarez, the left hander, is up in the Giants' bullpen. VR at second, McCann at first. Now he's behind him three and one. That's an easy take, and that, that miss out that wide and away really doesn't set up anything. A wasted pitch. Jose Alvarez getting the red alert now. And stay with the slider. Bryant right at the foul line. So he does come back to get blanket horn. And that's that's a big out. That's as good as a strikeout, a non-productive out. Now with Nimmo, a lefty, and then Conforto, a lefty, coming up. Gabe Kepler appears on his way to uh, bringing in the left-hander Alvarez to face them. Two men on, one man out. And Alvarez will be heading in four to three Giants. We'll be right back. Giants four Mets three top of the order coming up with the Mets against Alvarez. Now a word via Webex by Cisco. We need a part. It's nearly done. Can you repeat that? That's better. It's done. With WebEx, the McLaren Formula One team is collaborating like never before. Introducing the WebEx Suite, driving hybrid work. Giants four, Mets three. And Brandon Nimmo, who's been on base three straight times, coming up against Jose Alvarez. 45th game for Alvarez. He is the best guy the Giants have coming into an existing innings. He can get a ground ball and get a double play. Got a speedy runner at second, VR. McCann, the catcher, running at first. One out. The Giants overload to the right side of second against the left handed hitting Nimmo. And a pop up. And the infield fly rule in effect. You see the umpire, Lipka, making the call. Wow. That is a guy who generally is one who. Builds up pitchers pitch counts and he got him on one pitch. He went after a, a, an inside fastball with sink. Kind of scooped at it. So they get a one pitch non productive out. But another dangerous hitter Conforto. Who has struggled. Much of this year but. He has shown signs of. Coming out of that more recently tonight. 0 for 2 with a walk. Two on two out now. And a foul up the first base side. Conforto the last six games before tonight. Had nine hits and 20 at bat so. The Mets are hopeful that that. Means he's about to get it going. He's also hitting over 300. So far in the month of August. He went after the low fastball didn't get it 0 oh and 2. 
the three looks from Jose Alvarez that sinking fastball slider and a change up. And he's not going to put you away with a lot of velocity but he has great late movement. And he took that one. The Mets have two right handers throwing in their bullpen. Meanwhile. Lugo and Familia. Yeah the Mets have a nine man bullpen only one lefty. That was VR at second McCann at first two down in the inning. There goes VR. And. Uh, I don't think Buster would have thrown it even had he been able to. Grab it cleanly. He got such a huge jump. Yeah, that's that's a, a jump that you, not much you can do about, it, especially when you get a ball in the dirt. Well, with two outs and two strikes, it's not the end of the world. All the concentration from Alvarez right now is Conforto. He's thinking about the hitter. Runners at first and third now. Two and two, the count. Strike three called at the knees. What a job turned in by Alvarez to keep the Mets off the board. Go to NBCSportsBayArea.com slash the choice for more info presented by Toyota. Giants four Mets three last of the sixth inning a pitching change for the Mets when it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and auto service your trusted oil change tune up and break experts. Yuri's Familia, the new pitcher now for the Mets, 44 time he's coming in, the hard thrower. With 41 innings, he struck out 48. Hit the nine high 90s with his fastball velocity, both two and four seam. He's got a slider and a changeup to go with it. You're gonna see a lot of two seamers. Lots of velocity, lots of movement. Familia, who has had six wins coming out of the bullpen. Longoria. Oh, one one. As advertised, 95 mile an hour sink right out of bed, and he nails the outside corner perfectly. 41 innings, 48 strikeouts. He has walked 20. So he can be wild. One ball, one strike. Longoria has struck out and single to right. That ball might have uh, hit the catcher McCann, the umpire, Dan Asagna. We're giving him a few moments, maybe to shake it off. Well, that's the brotherhood of the mask right there, looking out for each other. One and two. There was a time when nobody wanted to face Familia. He had. About as nasty the stuff as any closer in the game had. But if memory serves, the Giants in 2016, it was Connor Gillespie hit the three run homer against him in the wild card playoff game. And the high hard one, 96 miles an hour, strike three. Brandon Crawford now. Crawford, two singles tonight. He's now hitting 302. And I look for him to go to left field on that fastball. It's going to tail away from Crawford at a high velocity. Crawford's hitting over 400 going back to the, the first day of July. Well, he's three for three in this one. Conforto hustles over to cut it off. Or he could take it right up the pull side gap. He wouldn't wait around. Brandon Crawford. If he keeps this up much longer, he'll be 
threatening to uh, into the the batting race for the best batting average in the league. Here is Wilmer Flores. It's, we've just been excited to watch what Crawford has been doing all year. Wilmer had an RBI single his last time. As Crawford dives safely back to the bag. Wilmer one for two in the game. Antoine Richardson over to give Crawford some info. I mean, being a 300 hitter, uh, really not that many of them. Is there only 15 300 hitters in all of the big leagues, both leagues? Right on the outside corner. 0 and 1. Yeah, that's one you tip your cap on. Just say thank you for letting me see that on the first strike and not the third strike. <laughs> that was nasty. Giants bullpen now is busy once again. Tony Watson, the left hander, started to throw. On one to Flores. That one is off the outside at the knees. One and one. Tommy LaStella is on deck. McCann, the catcher, looking over at the dugout. And the runner. Crawford back to the bag again. Sorry, Mike. Well, you see that sign with the little flick of the thumb from a catcher. That means the manager wants you to throw that ball to first base. Check that runner. I mean, Crawford's got nine steals. I mean, he's he picks his spots and he usually steals them off a pitcher that doesn't doesn't pay a whole lot of attention to him. Right through the middle, base hit center field. Second straight at bat. The Wilmers had a base hit. He's had great at bats all night tonight. Just waiting for something to come right back towards the middle, and this has got some hang to it just below the belt. And a nice discipline at bat going back up the middle. Now, he was looking for something middle in, John, and he spit on those two first pitches on the outside part of the plate. So he got what he was looking for, and then he jumped on it. Now, timeout is asked for, and here comes the pitching coach, Jeremy Hefner, about to speak to Familia. Go to the scout report as to how you want to go after Lestella. I mean, Lestella is a contact guy with an exceptional eye, but he's one of those type of hitters that absolutely will take what you give him. Sprays the ball around. You pitch him on one side of the plate, he'll go that way. Aaron Loop gets his second hump. So Hefner, the pitching coach, back to the dugout. Stella, a lefty, Yastrzemski, another lefty, on deck. Crawford at second, Flores at first. And that's ball one. Estella came into the game as a pinch hitter in the fourth inning. And he hit a line drive 99 miles an hour but right to the right fielder Conforto who made the catch and that was that. But he came right out of the dugout and hit one very hard. Two on one out four to three Giants. Now yeah, that's his change up. And it's a good one. And even that's got sink on it throws that change up with a two seam grip. He just so, throws so many two seam sinkers. I mean, you just don't really concern yourself with any of his other pitches. He was looking for a hard sink. Off 
the inside at 96. Two and one the count. Well, Stella, who had the three hit game yesterday, who just hit line drives over and over again in yesterday's game, and has already done that in his first at bat tonight. Now a base hit could mean a run. Ball three. Familia wanted that one. The way that McCann caught that ball had so much sink on it, he kind of caught it and took it out of the zone. He did not give us Ogda the plate up or a long look at it. Watch the gloves take it out of the zone. It's a good pitch. Three and one now. Three and two bounce found off to the right. Well I know how a catcher frames a pitch how he makes it appear to the umpire has been something that has and you've talked about it forever you were a proponent of having a catcher who did that well when you pitch but now teams look for catchers and try to teach that. See a lot of one knee, one knee down catching styles where a catcher will give you a target, then he'll drop the glove completely to the ground. So that when he's bringing that ball up, or his glove up, he can catch that ball and bring that momentum into the strike zone and get the low pitch. That is into the upper deck, off to the left. I mean, that's taught all the way down through the Giants minor leagues. The guys who've been around the game like Posey, I mean he does it on occasion, but he, he kind of blends it in with his traditional setup. And McCann's kind of the same way. I mean he'll do it sometimes, other times he won't. He struck him out. Well he got him with that change up again at 91. Same pitch he got the second strike with. It's a good one. Just takes a little off. Just upset the timing, and that's going to be the last pitch Familia throws. And now Loop, the lefty, will be summoned with the left-handed hitting Yastrzemski coming up, and the pitcher right behind him. Four to three Giants. Two uh, a threat here. Crawford at second, Flores at first, two down, and here is Aaron Loop to take the mound for the Mets. Loop, left hander, left hander out of the Tulane University baseball program, 46th time that he's come in. 38 innings amassed with 43 strikeouts against Ace Walks. He's got great stuff. I mean, he's a lefty that throws sidearm, but he can run it up there. I mean, you'll go mid, mid 90s in velocity. He's got a, a slider, curveball, and a changeup. Yastrzemski came into the game as a pinch hitter in the fifth inning and grounded out to third. So he is 0 for 1. Three infielders stacked up to the right of second. Nobody at shortstop for the Mets right now. Right in on the hands of that swing. Or that first pitch really caused Mike Yastrzemski to break down mid swing. Drop down and off the outside with that one. A ball and a strike. Mets uh, in their notes show a when Loop uses that changeup that just nobody's hitting it. That's in there. 92 miles an hour strike two. Well, and he's got some velocity too. Low to mid 90s. Not often you see side armors with that type of velocity. Tim Hill, the lefty with the Padres, the other guy who's got low to mid 90s velocity from the side, but that's rare. Right through the legs of Loop. 
but right to VR and that ends the inning. Two hits and two left four to three Giants Alonzo coming up in the seventh and Dave Fleming will be back with about seven hits no errors Giants four runs on ten hits one error and uh, Kevin Gosman seven strikeouts in five innings he allowed three he is the pitcher of record Giants can hang on he would be the man that would get the win and a big swing of the bat Chris Bryant a two run homer his 20th of the year his fifth 20 career 20 home run career in his career so New pitcher now for the Giants <laughs> it's time for a change thing speedy <laughs> oil change and auto service your trusted oil change tune up and break experts Tony Watson on now and so is Dave Fleming my pal and my partner just rolls right off the tongue Pete, oh. Al <laughs> Pete Alonzo takes a strike. Well interesting Jose Alvarez's spot did not come up but the Giants go to the bullpen anyway. Tony Watson pitching the seventh tonight. With the right hander Alonzo then a couple lefties coming up. Nice fastball strike two. You face this guy though in a one run game late and it's a nervous moment. Well he never changes his style of hitting because he's just trying to hit the ball as hard as he can as far as he can. I mean he is a beast. Oh two and that's exactly what he did there against a 94 mile an hour fastball. I mean he's got as much power as anybody in the game. Just power. I mean, his triple, the big hit of the night for the Mets was a low liner, but it was scalded. 112 miles per hour through the gap in right center. 0 2 off the end of the bat, a pop up. Wilmer coming over, but he can't get there. Alonzo lives to see another pitch. Take a look at that fifth inning triple. It was a two-nothing ball game here with two men on base, and he takes it the opposite gap. And nobody had a chance to get to that one. And a belly slide. Two-time defending home run derby champion. Oh two. And you know, a lot of guys get in that home run hitting. Experience and uh, in the Derby, and, and you know the, it's it takes a lot out of them. Well, it doesn't take a whole lot out of Pete Alonso. I mean, he he is a rapid fire power guy, and he was just a machine. He said, "Next year, I'm coming back." <laughs> He's, he puts on a great show. It's good for the game. O2, and he fouls that one off. Change up. Yeah, I'm thinking right now Pete Alonso is hoping that uh, it's an Olympic event in Paris when they reconvene for the Summer Olympics in three years. There's your gold medal favorite right there. I'd watch that Olympic event. Oh, are you kidding me? He might win gold, silver, and bronze. Another 0 2. He got him with the changeup. And that's a big. Bat to send back to the dugout. Just stayed with it. Just kind of stretched it out, got him to chase. He stayed with the outside corner for the last four pitches. And there's the payoff. So one out. Dom Smith comes up. Now Dom Smith has plenty of power to scare you in a one run game. Had a good at bat last time up, hit that sack fly to put the Mets ahead. Just inside. 94 miles per hour. We saw Tony Watson last year in a Giants uniform. It was like 88. Yeah. 87 miles per hour. And he went down there with the Angels this year, found his fastball, and here he is. Fouled off. Well, this has been such a great add to the Giants bullpen. Well, you know, we didn't even know it at the time. At the trade deadline, how taxed this bullpen was going to be, how hard they were going to have to push. I mean, think about how important this trade really has been. Best left handed hitter against lefty pitching in all of big league baseball, right here. But he didn't hit that one hard. Crawford charges and he gets rid of it quickly just in time. Wow, he had to hurry. You know, he. It's so nice to be able to have an arm 
as strong as Crawford's when you have to pull the trigger. But the whole play was made up on the exchange as to how quick it was from glove hand to bare hand. And it had to be smooth and it had to be perfect and it had to be powerful. And that is perfection. Wow. And he knew he had to hurry. Boy, he got that ball from his glove into a throwing position so quickly. And that is his genius. Truly any tiny mistake there. And he doesn't get him. He doesn't get him. But two outs for Jeff McNeil. Strike one. I mean, if you're Dominic, Dominic Smith, you're walking back to the dugout thinking, man, that's the big leagues. Because he already had that batting average figured. That was going to be a hit in his mind. And Brandon Crawford said, no, nah, I don't think so. Just outside. McNeil's 0 for 3. He's grounded out, struck out, and then hit a bullet that was caught at first by his old teammate, Wilmer Flores. 1 and 2. Three pitches, three sliders. And McNeil doesn't look like he's seeing that spin at all. I you don't see that very often with him. True, he's such a good pure hitter. I would think we might see another one of those. Chokes up with two strikes. Sets that circle change grip. May not throw that pitch, but he sets it in his hand before he puts it in the glove. He threw the slider, slapped to Crawford, and another quick exchange. He got McNeil. Nice defensive inning for Brandon Crawford. Great inning for Tony Watson. Seventh inning stretch time. Giants lead by one. For a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune up. And break experts. It's the right hander Trevor May for the 49th time this year coming in for New York. <laughs> Trevor May, the new pitcher, he's a big fella, 6'5, 240, and he throws like it. You'll see mid to high 90s with the velocity. Look at the strikeout, 61 against 17 walks and 44 and a third. He's also got a really good slider. It's a great kill pitch. And he's got a changeup. The Mets can throw some arms. They got different styles in their bullpen. They got soft tossing lefties, nasty sinkers. Brandon Belt will be the pinch hitter for Tony Watson. I, I, I think that diversity is so important. First pitch fastball at 96. That came right at him. Belts had a quiet few days. Came off the injured list and just exploded. It's that one hard to center field. Nimmo going back. All the way back. It's gone. Pinch hit home run. Brandon Belt. That's not quiet. His 16th of the year. 5 to 3 Giants. 4 22. Yeah, that's the beauty of having a hard thrower out there. He's going to supply some power. But once again, Brandon Bell taking on center field. They set that at 97 mile an hour fastball out over the middle of the plate. With two seam movement, and he just jumps on it. To tell by the sound. And yeah, no ballpark carrying that one in. That is out of here. Just the beautiful Brandon Belt swing there. Now Chris Bryant, who he launches one deep left. Giants go back to back. Chris Bryant, his second of the night, on the very next pitch, six to three. Well, it almost looked like he was up there looking for a slider. After the fastball was turned around by Belt, he was sitting on something soft, and May just trying to. Goose one in there to get a first pitch lazy strike and Bryant said uh uh. He was laying in the bushes for him. A high lazy hanger at 83 and it went out of here in a hurry.
How about three in a row? <laughs> Everybody's thinking about it. This place is buzzing. Third Giants home run for Chris Bryant. First multi home run game in a Giants uniform. 21 on the year. The Giants lead is up to three. The power of the Giants power. Third home run of the night. On the ground to third, Davis will throw out Posey. Let out a shaft. I mean, not everybody <laughs> throw will tee up a driver from that throw from third to first, but Davis did. He doesn't have a changeup over there. He doesn't have the pitching wedge. That is a gun. 16th time in Chris Bryant's career he's had a multi home run game. And it lit this place up. No kidding. So now Lamont Wade Jr. who struck out looking his first time up. He takes a strike right at the knees. Change up. Oh and two. That's a tough pitch after a, a first pitch change up. A guy blows 97 three ahead. Not often you see Lamont Wade Jr. late on a fastball, and he was that time. The 0 2. Slap foul. Well, the game's a long way from being over. We're only in the bottom of the seventh inning, but those two swings of the bat, Giants just grinding out every minute of this game on the mound against. A Mets team that has put a lot of pressure on. Now the lead is three. Way down the left field line. Oh, carrying pretty well, but it's going to go into the net foul. Oh, yeah. Bro! Bro, give me some bro hugs. <laughs> He's going to hug everybody in that section. Oh, two. Big chopper. McNeil. Two down. Oh, yeah. Fired up. Chris Bryant you know one thing that Farhan and Scott Harris both talked about when they traded for Chris Bryant was this park fits him well and now all three of his Giants home runs have come here at home I mean uh, Giants fit all these home runs at home anyway this year but Chris Bryant is not going to be afraid of launching the ball here at Oracle that's exciting. Ball two to Longoria. I mean, his addition to this club has been incredible energy. And he has absolutely hit the comfort zone early. I mean, it's just so hard to say for a guy who wore that Cubs uniform for all those years, won an MVP, won a World Series with the Cubs. Was an icon in Chicago, and I look at him in a Giants uniform. And it looks like he's been in a Giants uniform forever. I know. I mean, and I think it's his whole demeanor. I mean, he's really relaxed in that clubhouse. He's relaxed on the field, and a lot of guys can't do that. I mean, it's not an easy thing to do. Swing and a miss at 97, two and two. Yeah, and you think when Evan Longoria came from Tampa, and he was the Chris Bryant of of Tampa. I mean, he was beloved. I mean, he was the most recognizable Ray. And when he came and put a Giants uniform on, it was uncomfortable for him. I mean, he did, it took him a while, I mean, a long while, to hit the comfort zone. Like he talked about, it took him a couple of years. But for Chris Bryant, man, he is absolutely in the zone.
full count. High and tight. Longoria takes ball four. That's a two out walk. Second time Evan Longoria gets on base tonight. Gives us a chance to see Brandon Crawford here in the seventh. It's not that easy this late in the year to get your batting average shooting up, but that's exactly what Crawford's doing. Three more hits tonight. One of 15 guys hitting 300 or better in the big leagues, both leagues. 15, that's it. He hits that one deep to right field. That one's going to whistle right over the head and off the bricks. Caroming away from Conforto. Longoria around third. He's going to come in to score. Crawford all the way to third. And standing with a triple. And a four for four night for Brandon Crawford. Seven to three Giants. Well, he is not waiting around. I mean, looking for a pitch. He looking out over the plate, looking middle away. And he gets 97 right in the zone. And look at how tall and look at him jumping on this fastball at 97, hitting at 109 off the wall in right center. And the Giants catch a break here as it hits the bricks and kicks away from Conforto. So an easy score from for Evan Longoria and an easy triple for Crawford. Well, the Mets are coming out. They're checking on May right now. It's triple stand-up style for Crawford. His feelings are definitely hurt. He has been hit hard here in the seventh inning. I don't know if he's been hit hard in an inning like this all year long. Almost like are they looking at his hand? Well, it's not like he's throwing weak stuff up there. I mean, that last pitch to Crawford was 97. It's a pretty long chat. And I think played him for Dana Saga is trying to say, okay, we need to make a decision here, fellas. What are we going to do? Well, he's going to throw a practice pitch. And that looked pretty free and easy. Yeah, he gave the thumbs up. This is a pitch that they threw high to Longoria, and he may have tweaked his back a little bit. Yeah. Had a little hitch there. I mean, that is interesting. They weren't ever, they, they weren't asking him to stretch or looking at any, I, I guess it was just purely, how you feeling? But I think that has to be it, don't you? Yeah, totally. I think he may have just had a little bit of a misstep, maybe landed in a, an awkward position. So now Wilmer Flores against his old team. He's had two hits in the game. Change up strike one. Oh, he's had great at bats tonight. He has. I mean, he just missed one in his first at bat. He popped up to center field and he cashed in the last two with two nice singles. But he just had such great balance in his at bats. It's that one to right. Conforto underneath it. He'll make the catch for out number three, but the Giants add on in a very big way. First as a pinch hitter, Brandon Belt to straightaway center field. And then the very next pitch, Chris Bryant, his first multi home run game as a Giant. And the Giants got another one after that. Fifth pitcher of the game, the right hander, Tyler Rogers, to pitch the eighth with a little bit more cushion now. He was going to come in whether it was four to three. But now he's got a four run lead for the 57th time this year.
And he's quite simply been the most valuable Giants reliever this year. First pitch swing, chopper to third. Tough play, long throw, and not in time. Wow, what an effort from Evan Longoria. It almost felt like it was a foot race between Davis and the ball because they were running at the same speed. It's such an awkward position that Longoria had to try and get a throw off. I mean, his momentum's going off the field. I mean, that's close. Really close. And the fact that it even is even close is remarkable. Wow. I think they may have got him. I, that's really close. One more look here. Yeah. Giants are not going to contest. Mm. Brandon Belt stayed in the game after pinch hitting at first base. He's got a little more reach than Wilmer Flores. Made that play even a little closer. I'm a little surprised they aren't having him look at that one. I mean, eighth inning, you really don't have anything to lose. Now that one hit high and deep to right field, and it is gone. This game is not over. Jonathan VR, a two run homer. Seven to five. Still nobody out. Doesn't happen against Tyler Rogers very often. Wow. Well, and he hits the riser. I mean, I don't think anybody's hit a riser from the left side off him all year. There has been a riser that got hit out from a right hander early in the year, but this goes up. And Villar catches it with backspin, and he's what he left the box is like he just wasn't that impressed with it. We were. I was shocked. So now James McCann and the game is still very much in the balance. He swings at the first pitch. Well, that little infield hit turns into a run. Quickly, bang bang. McCann's Everybody up there so far has been swinging at that first pitch. You're right. He's got two hits tonight. Chops that one just a little squibber, and it stayed foul. Belt was hoping it would kick back fair. Tyler Rogers. That's just the second time in his career he's given up a home run to a left handed hitter. Maybe Cody Bellinger. The other one. I think you're right. I have to look that up. Oh two. Got him swinging. Well, that's what you like to do after you give up a home run, strike out the next guy. Goes down and just kind of throws a little floater up there. So now Brandon Drury, who's been by some measure the best pinch hitter in all of baseball this year, he's been a hot hitter. For the Mets. With one out and the base is empty. Strike one. This is Tyler Rogers inning. Nobody up in the bullpen. Giants trust him in these spots. Wow. Oh. That's one that Buster wanted. That's one Tyler Roger wanted. Mm. That's one if you would have called it. I don't think Brandon Drury would have argued. I was wrong. It wasn't Cody Bellinger. Swing and a miss. Two and two. I Sam thought, Hilliard. I thought it was Cody Bellinger. <laughs> I don't know what is in my brain that 
has a picture of that, but. Two and two to Brandon Drury. Fouled off. Sticking with that slider. Three of those four home runs for Drury as a pinch hitter. He's got 10 pinch hits for the Mets this year. 2 2. Up the middle and past the reach of Listella. Make it 11 pinch hits. Nice discipline at bat. Right up there at the belt in the outside corner. And just not trying to do too much with the swing. That Drury's approach is pretty solid. I think the hitters who tend to have a little success against Rogers kind of have that kind of approach. So now Nimmo. Strike one to the leadoff hitter. Still only one out. Three of the four Mets here in this inning have reached base, including the two run homer. Strike two. Bang, bang. Mets don't know anything about Rodgers. I'm impressed with the approach that they've had against him. Teams that normally see Rodgers for the first time, they struggle against him. 0 2. Just outside. Trying to, to wrap door. around a frisbee. Good idea. Conforto on deck. And then you get Pete Alonso up there if the inning would continue. Nimmo strikes out swinging. So in the end he comes back in with a little fastball that just sinks underneath that bat head. He just turned back a pretty good hitter right there Mr. Rogers. Two outs. Alonzo looms on deck Conforto who has walked and scored a run. Foul ball strike one. Outside of Nemo, everybody's been pretty aggressive on that first pitch against Rodgers. It's an interesting, it is almost like it's been their game plan against him. And we haven't seen teams employ that. I mean, Rodgers, like a lot of guys, they're trying to get strike one on everybody. Conforto got jammed, kind of a little squibber. Crawford throws him out. Tyler Rogers gives up the two run homer but nothing more the Giants will try to add on as we go to the bottom of the eighth it's seven to five and then right after the belt home run the very next pitch into the left field bleachers home runs 20 and 21 of the season for Chris Bryant hit a couple of lazy breaking balls out over the fence took advantage of two mistakes and made the Mets pay the ultimate price new pitcher now for the Mets will be the right handed veteran Seth Lugo in his seventh year at the big league level. I've always liked him. I mean he could do anything for you. I mean he's been a starter at the big league level. And he's a guy that you know he, he's got the pitches you would see from a starter two types of fastball curveball slider and a change up. Stella ripped that one foul. Just I, to me it's always such a weapon if you get a guy who can make a spot start can cover up two three sometimes even four innings out of the bullpen in a in a real pinch but also pitch a late inning in a tight game or come into a situation get a strikeout or a ground ball for you and Lugo is that guy 
I think they're invaluable. I mean, there really aren't that many guys who can make that claim. One two to Listella popped up with the shift on. That's a tough play. Sprinting over into foul ground, Davis. One out. Tommy Lestello for three tonight. Mike Kostremski stands in. Mike's 0 for 2 since coming into the game. Kind of a line change night for the Giants. They got all the right handers in against the starter, Rich Hill. They got him out in the middle of the fourth inning. I mean, that's one thing. When you only have one lefty in your bullpen, I mean, you're really vulnerable to that. Once the situation presented itself, and it was just a wave of left handed hitters. Giants had Yaz and Dickerson and Belt and Lestella and Wade all on the bench to start the game, and they've all gotten the game. Giants still have Casale, right handed hitter, left on the bench. Well, and Alex Dickerson's pinch hit double was a huge play in this game. Brandon Belt's pinch hit home run. And those are the two of the biggest swings of the night for the Giants coming off the bench with the left handed hitters. Wow. It was exciting. Stremski kind of flips one to shallow center. Nimmo is going to dive and make the catch. Two down. It's a nice play. There's a ball of energy out there. A little breaking ball just kind of lobbed out there into center field. A really good jump straight in. And you get an idea of the closing speed that Nimmo has. Concentration, eyes watching it right into the glove. So two outs for Brandon Belt. Take strike one. Those fast guys, for some reason, I can always picture what they must have been like as kids playing Little League. <laughs> they were fast. Just running circles around everybody. Belt bunts, and he popped it up. To Lugo. So the Giants go down in order. The big hitters coming up for the Mets. Jake McGee coming in. Two run Giants. A save situation, and the Giants will bring in their closer, Jake McGee, who bounced back in yesterday's game against his old team, the Rockies, and got his 25th save of the year. Looking for number 26 tonight. Well, last uh, yesterday's ball game, in three up, three down, seven pitch save. So. Uh, or Jake McGee who comes into his 53rd game going to take on the heart of this Mets lineup Alonzo Smith and McNeil three of their best fastball hitters and that is his number one weapon but take a look at how righties hit him 197 lefties at 167 nobody's really hitting them very true and right as we're getting ready to start the inning we're going to have a delay This guy's running across the field and now he's going off the field and uh, he's going to be spending the night in jail. I mean, the difference between San Francisco and New York. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, those nine beers you had, guy, is uh, going to cost you a night in jail. So he's having his moment. And 
That is a decision he will live to regret. Yeah. Not smart, not funny. So Jake McGee can refocus here, take a couple extra warm-up throws, and get ready for the ninth inning. Go ahead on a Padres uniform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it adds to the Padres slump. <laughs> He's about to have a rough night. Man, it ain't worth it, people. It is not worth it. Another L for the Padres tonight. Now they came back, I mean. They did. They were down in that ball game, tied it up at the top of the ninth, and then it was CJ Crone, a walk off homer. Tatis has given him the, a boost again, coming back. Pretty heroic stuff from Tatis. All right, here's Pete Alonzo in a two run game against McGee. And right away he gets squeezed. That has definitely been a strike tonight. That I don't get. It was right to the target. It was right at the knees. It's been called a strike all night. Now well, Buster made the, the the formal protest. One and one. Just to let Alonzo know that he had another pitch. Definitely put a thought in the back of his mind. The thing about Jake McGee, he doesn't shake off Buster Posey. One, two. Well, he threw another one, and Alonzo was pretty defensive. If McGee shakes his head, it's because Buster, Buster Posey wants him to shake his head. Tells them to shake his head. One, two. Alonzo to right field. Lamont Wade is right there, out number one. Big out for Jake McGee. Dominic Smith. To help the Mets get the tying run to the plate, they need a base runner to do it here in the ninth inning. Ball one. Well, his last time up against Tony Watson, we showed you that number. He's got the best batting average for a left handed hitter against left handed pitching of anybody in baseball. You know what that tells you? It tells you that he's got a big brother that was a left hander. <laughs> he took a lot of swings <laughs> against a lefty. A lot of swings against his brother in the backyard. Or a best friend, or a relative, or a sister, somebody that Heck yeah he played the game with a lot. He hits that one foul. Now he's behind in the count one two, and that was another slider from Jake McGee. I think it's important that he shows it, uses it. Well, and only because everybody's up there sitting on it. And you get to this part of the lineup, and, and those guys are going to do nothing but look for dead red. If you flop that breaking ball up there, I mean, it doesn't have to be a great one. Just, you know, put some location on it, let her go. Steal a strike. Two and two.
been a long long 24 hours for the Mets and you got to give them credit they have showed up here tonight and played hard got him swinging two down now they're fighting for their life they know this West Coast swing means everything to them. and here fastball challenge and he gets a swing through see ya. Dodgers did win tonight two to one a scoreless game late in L.A. but they broke through and beat the Pirates so the Giants need a win to stay four up in the National League West They're one out away. Jeff McNeil trying to keep the game going and get J.D. Davis up there. Slider for ball one. Gamer, babe. Strike one. McNeil was going to take a strike. Two down, ninth inning. The 1 1. Did he go? Yes, he did. Another slider. Steal a strike. One and two. Jake McGee. Slider just fouled off. Neil did well to catch a piece of that one. I think it's the most sliders we've seen McGee throw in an outing. I agree. And that's what five now. Here's McGee's one two again. Bounce toward third. Nice pick by Longoria. Steps it over to first in time. And this game is over. The Giants take game one against the Mets by the final score of seven to five. And a very nice ninth inning for the Giants closer, Jake McGee. Now, yeah, once again, I mean, the, the, the bullpen made it stand, but the offense tonight was so good. And uh, they supported. Kevin Gosman and uh, he handed the ball to the bullpen with a one run lead and they preserved it. Just a nice win. I mean this is a, a desperate Mets team and they were coming at the Giants hard and they turned them back. Nice start to this series. Uh, Chris Bryant first multi home run game in a Giants uniform 16th of his career leading the way to this Giants victory Giants seven Mets five. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for Giants Post Game Live presented by Toyota starting.